Hello everybody, you're welcome to the Vision Guide. This is Parenting Essential and it's a special edition with Adeyinka Alashiyori or Motori Anuba. Thank you for joining us this moment. It's going to be awesome. It promises to be an amazing time today and I'm so excited. I am super delighted to be bringing in my darling today. Adeyinka Alashe Yori Omotori Anuba. All right, we are going to be talking about the vision today. The topic of our discussion today is the vision. The vision, the vision, the vision. It's going to be awesome. I am very happy. I'm very happy. Here we talk about the vision, and this is parenting essential. And I always say that parenting must be intentional, it has to be purposeful. And it has to be guided jealously. It must be intentional. So today we are going to be looking at parenting and the vision. In aspect of having a positive parenting. In aspect of being intentional in our parenting. And without further ado, I'll be calling in my guest for today. Oh my God. It's your one and only Adeyinka. Alashe Yori Omotori Anuba. You are welcome, my love. Thank you so much. It's an honor to be here. I appreciate this You're welcome. opportunity. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you so, so very much. Very happy to have you on the vision guide. I am yeah. so, so happy. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome, my love. Thank You're welcome. You so much, very happy to have you on the vision guide today. And in case you don't know, this is Parenting Essentials. And it's from the Vision Guide. And it's a special edition with your one and only mm -hmm. that you can see right here at Deinka Alasheyori. In this part of the, uh, our lives, uh, the Vision Guide, we so much believe in intentionality in parenting. And we so much believe in the vision. In the vision. What is the vision? Ability to be able to foresee. What can you see? What can you see? This go along with your, in your marriage, in your singlehood, in your parenting. So, but today we are going to be looking deep into parenting, into parenting, using, using Adeyinka Alashiyori as our case study. So I'm just going to be asking her a few questions, and I believe uh, she's, she's ready to answer our questions today, and it's going to be awesome. All right, okay. Uh, once again, you're welcome. Hey, thank you so much. Thank you everybody for joining. I know you have so much questions. You want to ask me, how do you manage ministry? How do you manage this? How do you, you have to stay tuned and oh. watch. <laughs> All right, okay. Uh, firstly, I want you to, I want to ask you this question first. Uh, how was your growing up like? Can you just tell us more about your growing up? How was it like growing up as a little child? A uh, few experiences that you'd like to share with us. Um, growing up? I was um, a church girl. I go to church. I smile a lot. I evangelize as little as I was because my church, you do evangelism, it is compulsory. You have to follow everybody, go out, do that, do souls, you know, a whole lot of things. So as a little child, I go to school, okay, come back, eat, smile, and play with sand. <laughs> awesome. Eat, smile, and play with sand. Okay, can you just tell us about uh, more of your parents' roles while growing up? Uh, before we go there, I would like you to talk about, uh, you said you're a church girl. So most of the time, I always like us to clarify this. I made a video before talking about who we are is not who, who our, our children should be. So building a personal relationship with our children is very important. And I think it's, it's one of the things that we used to say growing up, I'm a church girl. I strongly believe being a church girl is not being a believer. Mm -hmm. You understand? So how was it like, can you please clarify this aspect? How was it like, were you a church girl? Did, did you have an encounter with Christ at your early stage and things like that? Then after that, you can tell us about your parents' roles mm -hmm. in, in okay. your childhood. When I was a little child, a little girl, I'm still a little girl, you know, but at least I've grown a bit. So then I I go to church normally, but there was a particular day when everybody had an encounter with Christ, one way or the other. That oh, this is the time I know that this 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 is so wrong. At the time when you do something and your inner man 
Your own, the spirit of God in you will tell you this is wrong. That is where the encounter began. That is where you have that fellowship, constant fellowship with God. So being a, from being a normal church girl to having an encounter with Christ, that is what I mean by being a church girl and gay. Okay, much better. Gay. So my parents, they, they played a major part. They must have heard something, maybe while they were praying, the Lord told them, maybe when they were, when they were praying with um, the group of people in the church, maybe a pastor prophesied or something. Mm -hmm. So they were, run, they were running with that vision. They were, they were constantly reminding themselves, they were consciously, consciously reminding themselves about what the Lord told them about me. Okay. I might not be aware. Okay, let me just come in here. Okay. You said maybe they had something. I would like you to clarify. Did, did you at any point heard from them that there was a prophecy that went ahead of, of you? Um, for, at that time, okay. I do not know that there was a prophecy at that time. Okay. So grown, growing up, I later realized maybe they, maybe they had they had a conversation, they, they, mm -hmm. they had a conversation together, they heard it when the man of God prophesied. I did not know them, you know, I was not aware. So I, I know that when I was growing up, they had that vision in them. I was not aware. They did not tell me this is what you will do. Okay. They did not tell me this is what the Holy Spirit told us about you. They did not tell me that. But I know they were grooming me in that way. You have to do this, you have to be right, you have to be this, you have to be that. So, so they jealously guided the vision. Mm -hmm. So now, so can, can you remember some of the roles your parents played in who you are today, being an household name, Adenka, Alashiri, that, you know, at that point you didn't realize maybe they had a revelation or a prophecy went ahead or something, but something that we were sure about is uh, guiding you jealously, yeah. just like as, as being intentional in parenting, our job mm -hmm. is to guide our seed, our growing glory, just like I like to say, I like to call them on this platform, because our children are our growing glory, and our job as intentional parent, a parent who is vision carrier, is to guide this seed jealously. And those were the things that you saw in your parent. You were jealously guided and things like that. But what were the special things that you could remember? That my mom or my dad did this. And, uh, you know, it's part of why I could see the result or, you know, being an household name today. Can you just give us some tips that you remember? Like, okay, this was, they did this and it was a jealously, uh, you were jealously guided. A whole lot of things. They make sure I attended every program in church. Mm. One, they make sure that you go to family, a quite delay. Then I was not married, so I have to go to family lecture. I have to go to pastoral clinic. I have to go to minister. Everything, I whatever, every whatever they do, whatever they do in church, I have to be there. One. Then number two is every day my mom gets CDs of. Songs, known or unknown um, gospel minister all over the world, from every church, from every denomination, from all, all over the world, she will get them and make sure she plays them. Not that she will just get them and put it in the house. She plays them every day. She, she will put, it's a point of duty for her to play those songs, wake you up, anytime you wake up in our house and... There is no music, that means there is, there is no light, or the gel is not born. Mm. But if you have lights, you have to wake up with song. That song will give you that um, attitude of thanksgiving. You want to tell God thank you. Because to be thanksgiving song, she will, she will desperately put it, she intentionally she will put mm. it there for everybody to listen. So when you wake up, and then I was the only child. So it was, it was just me. And that has been the normal, you have to listen to this song, and that grows gratitude in me. That grows gratitude in me. When I wake up in the morning, when I, 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 the song I'm listening to is about Thanksgiving, some slept, they do not wake up, some this, I, I have to just say, God, I'm grateful. Mosulayo, Mojilayo. That was like, that song became part of me every day. Mosulayo, Mojilayo. So I have to sing that song every day. When time I wake up, even to not to now, my family say, the media can sing that song because it is what I heard while growing up. Okay. And after that, I discovered they have their money devotion. Okay. They do money devotion every time. They will pray, they will pray for me, they will pray for themselves, they will pray for even the unborn children, my mm -hmm. younger ones. Yes, I was the only child. I was the only child. So 
they will pray for me, they will do this, they will do that, that's what my parents do. And then my dad, oh my God, no man, no boy. No, that time, you can't. Definitely, if anybody, my dad is so strict that he breaks him every time. He's so good at breaking him. That tiny thing, that big thing, will break it. He, he will collect your phone. He will do a whole lot, you know, just to guide you jealously. Anytime I'm on call, you know, like a young girl, we just tell you, Come on, come on, come on, what's it to you? Bring that thing. We'll break the thing and get me another thing. We'll break the thing and get me another thing. So, I think. <laughs> Alright, so I'm just going to stop life. her right there. So, but for I mean, me, these are awesome, they are wonderful testimonies, you know. The aspect of, you know, the things you learned while growing up, like the song, it might sound funny, but these are, there's some things we need to borrow or we take in from our parents' lessons and just pass it on to the next generation. As long as we know that this is good and it worked for us, why not? We can apply it and use the same for our children. However, using that as case study today, that we, we, we're using that so that we can draw out some lessons. In what you have just said, I won't let us go to another point until I just pinpoint the lessons I have learned from these things that you have just said. You know, I made a video before talking about if God give you a child after waiting for a long time, would you give it? Hmm. Would you give it back? You know, sometimes we want to be Lord on our children. Oh, I waited for 20 years. I waited for 30 years. No, 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 no. My child must be a doctor, a lawyer, a pharmacist. We have all these ideas in our head. Sometimes even to our unborn children. You're saving money. You want your child to go to Harvard. Don't get me wrong. These are awesome things. They are amazing things. It's good for us as parents to have plan. At the same time, we should always have it at the back of our mind that it's the Lord who has given us the seed that has the final say. So what I saw in this story of yours is that they were ready to give it home. Even if they had a revelation or it was a prophecy that was said to them, it's so obvious that they were not ready to impose. They didn't impose that you're going to be a singer. But they were ready to say, Lord, let your will be done. So they said every day growing up, they were, they were playing music and things like that. But they never said anything to you. So that is the aspect of guiding whatever you have, your seed. Jealously, it even we got to a level when somebody came to me to say that, Oh, we'd like you to join a band, mm -hmm. we'd like you to sing behind this person. I went to him and I was like, Ah, God, oh, I want to go and join him, I want to be singing and all that. Then, when I got home and I told my parent that I want to, he, he told my, that my mom, Okay, the, the man. That guy went to meet my mom directly because he was probably somebody that was teaching us when we were young. And so he had access to them. So my mom told that guy that she's not going to back off. Hmm. And I said, That's very deep. She said she's not going to back, she's not going to back off for that person. And so I said, and so when I heard it, I was like, ah, why? They asked me to come as a for you. And do this and do that and all that. She said, no, like, you will not go and back up there. That we know what the Lord told us about mm. you. Just be here, do what we used to do. And, you know, my mom, anytime we relocate from one area, you know, when you grow up, you might want to change the environment, she will be the first person to find a church. She will get the church. She will go to most, like, two to three churches and discover that, mm, I, I want to like, I like this place, let's go there. Mm -hmm. So she will look for a place that is better for the family, that everybody can come, do this, do that. And yeah, our church was just behind our, our window. Mm -hmm. So when she told me that you will be singing, you will not back up. So, at the time I was like, ah, she was like, I was like, I was like, church and all that. But, Thank God we are here today. Praise God. <laughs> praise God. Don't mind me. Uh, that, we still praise God anyways because that's a big one from God. It's a big testimony and we are not going to take that for granted. See, I always say this and I'm going to say it again. The vision you cannot see. The revelation you cannot see. It is almost impossible for you to achieve it. Mm. So they did their part awesomely and I give it up to them. They were sure of the vision they saw. They were sure of the revelation, whatever they had, they were very sure of it. 
And that is why they could say to that guy, no, my child is not, is not going to back. Sometimes it may tarry. What is that vision? What is that revelation that you have in your hands at this moment, maybe over your child or your life? Even at this moment of the singles, God has said to you a long time ago, you are going to be married. But yet there is no husband, yet no wife. But don't let your vision go dim. Guide it jealously. Though it may tarry, wait for it. It will surely come to pass. So don't whatever the Lord has said to you, especially today, focus is on our children and about parenting. Whatever you have seen, just guide it jealously. They were too sure. For them, they, they knew you were not going to be a backup or something like that. But it wasn't clearly for me. I did not know. Of but course. Then I but did, they were sure. They were, they were so sure that they said, they said to me that, oh, my backup. Then, now I realize why. Because if this fame had come, mm -hmm. it might be attributed to somebody. Mm -hmm. That maybe because she was behind this person, maybe because she was behind this person, maybe because, because she was behind this person. So all of those things, they guided its jealousy, actually. Mm -hmm. They were so sure about what they knew. But I, I was not sure about that time. I, I don't know what was happening. I was even telling them that, ah, this person is, this person is, this. Okay. Very good. All right, I'll just go straight to my next question because I don't want us to keep a lot of people waiting today. We want to manage the time as quickly as possible. But please note that the vision and the revelation you cannot see. It is almost impossible to achieve it. What is vision? Ability to be able to foresee, even in darkness. See, when, the, when, God, when God is telling you that this is it, that this mug in front of us, it is blue, but all you can see is white. See, your job is to believe who has said it. What did he say? If God says something, he will definitely bring it to pass. So as parent, as intentional parent, as parent who is full of vision on our growing glory, let us be ready to give, give the child back to God. We can't be Lord over their lives. They are gift from God. We are just caretakers. We are caretakers. We have to be open-minded to, to, to be ready to say, God, over to you. Over to you. Whatever you say, let it be. Let it be. If indeed we depend and rely totally on God, we we'll never be good to share no, it's going to show up and come through for us. So this, my next question, you said a little bit about it, but mostly about your parents, but now directly to you. Did you ever see this day coming? And at the point that you realize, okay, what was the point that you realized this vision and revelation? That you yourself caught it, that this is what God, what, what God wants me to do. What point in your life did you realize that, oh, this is me, and this is who God has ordained me to do? Or who God has ordained me to be, and how did you guide the vision and revelation jealously? Hmm. For me, singing for me, <laughs> I don't know because it's a way of life already giving thanks to God. So, going to church, doing that duty as a choir in church, I've grown so. Doing that, I was punctual, I was always there, I like to go to church, to go and do that for God. So, I met my now husband, who was then a friend, brother, and then he said to me that, this thing that you have, I think he had a conversation with my parents too. So, this thing that you have, that you used to do in church, let's do this, let's get the team together, let's walk towards this, let's bless people outside the church, let's do this, let's do that. So I, I felt like, mm, I asked him, then I said, to go to church and tell people and invite people, how, how? So it was like, don't worry. So when we get invites, we go to represent the church. So we go out to represent the church. At the time, at that time, when he told me, so it was like somebody God used to propel that in me. Mm. So when that, when he said that, so I went back, I told my pastor that I, we want to do this, we want to do that. He said, go and pray. So I went to pray. After praying, we came back with some names. 
We came back with Hallelujah praise team. We came back with Ifya Ade uh, praise team. We came, we came back to Ade Ika Omoluwa. We came back with so many, like five to seven names that uh, he said you are not sure. If you are sure, if you are sure about you what, you won't write so many names like this. I said I'm sure about these are the names I can think of that we can actually come with. So it was like he, he, he took those names, he ruled out some names that if your day is not global, uh, is not global. You need a name that everybody all over the world will be able to call. You are not limited to um, um, this location alone. You are global. You are this. So he said, Hallelujah, Preston will be the name. That, that is okay. So I said, Okay, let's use Hallelujah, Preston because of what you said and all. We took Hallelujah, Preston. We were using Hallelujah, Preston. We are using Hallelujah, Preston. Then the Lord gave me a song, Allah Sheyorimi. Mm. So Allah Sheyorimi, everybody all over the world that listened to that song, not this big, but everyone that listened to that song, Ila, Shagamu, anywhere we went to minister and we dropped the CD for them, they will tell me, they will call me Adi Inkala So they will call me Sister Inkala So that name came from Alash Yorimi, and that name overshadowed Alelia Preston at the time. So we went with, we went, we were not using Adi Inkala and her. Uh, Alivia Preston. So when the vision, when the vision was evident, when we can see it clearly that oh, we have we are going to this place and the hand of God is there. So this is what God wants. How would I continue? What should I do? I was patiently waiting on God. I was praying. I do that. I that which okay. I do for God. I'm going to stop you at this point because I really want you to explain a little bit. What we are saying, so let me make it clear for you so that you know how to go about it. Okay. So at the, at the point that you realized the vision, I want you to let us know when was the point, like, okay, my parents have been playing, I'm a born again Christian now, with the help of your parents raising you up in the way of the Lord. Okay. So as in, at, the, which, at, at what point did you realize, okay, I need to sing? So that was the point you had the vision. We want to know, I want to know how, how long was it between the point you realized the vision and the, the point that the vision became uh, at least what people can see or what you can tell people, okay, now you've been getting invites. It's not the day you realize the vision that you started getting invites to churches. Yeah. That was what I said. I said I've been ministering in church, okay. in my church. So I've been, I've been singing for God in church as a right. choir. So singing in church and my, my now husband, which was then my friend, that propel that that gave me the hints, the hints about oh you can do this let's do this let's he do also this. saw the vision yes. he, he he saw the vision he saw that this is what this girl likes doing and then he had a conversation with my parents mm. so with that he felt like okay let's just let me just push her maybe she need a push she 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 needs somebody to tell her that this is what she you have to do. This is what the Lord has called you to do. Probably you don't know. You are not saying it yet. So when he, when he did that, <laughs> with the help of God, I told you I went to my pastor. He said something about it too and all that. Okay, okay. I'll just come in there. Uh, see, that's an awesome testimony. Then your friend um, became your manager. Now your husband also saw the vision. We have a question to answer. Somebody already has a question about... Uh, once you have a partner who doesn't understand your vision, what should one do? We are going to come to that. But before we go to that, so but before we go to that, we are going to talk to the singles. See, if singles don't have partner yet, at least you do, are not married. For those who are not married and you want to be intentional in your parenting, you want to be in intentional in your marital life, it is very important for you to go with this, with one with the same vision. Your vision must align to the singles. We are going to go to that person who asked the question that when you have a, a partner who doesn't have the vision with you, what should you do? But for you that you don't, you don't have a partner yet, you are not married. Even if you are engaged and you don't have the same vision, my dear, you are not married. You have to have the same vision, same revelation, same way. Because if you, can't, if you cannot accept 
want another's vision, it is very difficult for you to get the result. Imagine how amazing your husband now saw that ah, this is who you are. This is the gifting of God in you. He helped you. He stood by you. He pushed it out. That's awesome. And that is going to make me remember when I met my husband, my darling husband. For me, <laughs> I had, I, I've shared this so many times and I know... So for those who are familiar with me, I'm sure you have heard this over and again, that when we met, I had this revelation that we we're going to have twins, and their name is going to be Peculiar and Precious. And that was in year 2000 that I had caught this revelation. And I met my husband in year 2006. So when I met him, all I did was just to share my, this is my revelation. This is what I believe God wants, that we're going to have a twins, I'm going to have a twins, and, and it's going to be Peculiar and Precious. And because, you know, we were together, he accepted the vision and the revelation of God, and we both together carried it jealously. But bear in mind, telling a guy who we were not married to, we, we got married in 2009, and we didn't see these twins coming for 2015. Imagine if we are not in the same vision of you. That's eight years after. Uh, it, was, uh, it was over six years after. Six years ago. So if the vision wasn't clear, if we are not both in this together to embrace what God has said, it will have been a war. Ah, <laughs> lady, you said God said you are going to have twins. And I said yes. So where are the twins? Twins, first year, second year, third year, fourth year, fifth year, sixth year. But because it was so clear to us, it was so clear, we guided the vision. We never allow it to go dim. So also to the singles out there, Intending parent, you are married, you are waiting to, on God to give you those children that He has promised. Don't let your vision go dim because you can't see them. It's been one year, no pregnancy. It's been two years, no pregnancy. But God, you said it. Yes, faithful is He that has promised. If He say it, in, He will bring it to pass. Whatever He has said, if He say anything like this, He's going to bring it to pass. I am uh, like a spiritual mother also. She waited for 25 years. 24 years plus, 24 years plus. You know, one thing that always amazes me, well, something amazed me about her, anytime I got the privilege to, anytime I get the privilege to talk to her, she will be like, oh, no, oh, my baby, 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 oh, I'm like, what is she talking about? You see, the, the, the assurance she'll be talking to you with, I'm like, what is this? She was so sure, and she waited for 24 years. Hmm. <laughs> there was a day that was the, uh, one year like that we met in Dubai. Mom was telling me like, uh, no, 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 my baby, my baby. Marvelous is doing amazing like now. The child is called Marvelous. She might be, uh, be seeing this video later. The child is growing in the, in the, in the, in the power and the strength of the Lord. Yeah, but what, the yeah, so what, what do I want to, what do I, yeah, what I want to bring out is, you know, the, the assurance even he tarried, he tar I don't think I have any other person in here that waited that long. But the clarity was so certain. And we, we were in the hotel room that day, and mom was telling me, like, oh, no, 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 my mom, my mom, my mom, my mom, my And I looked at her like this, like, what? I was shocked. And indeed, my mom. So I don't know what you're going through. Most especially for those who are waiting on God for the fruit of the womb. I'm not saying you're going to wait that long. That's not my prayer for you. But just be rest assured. As Shelley, it will happen. Those babies will come according to your heart desire. According to those visions that you saw. You know, sometimes this happens to us. Maybe we, we, we have a vision of having triplet or quadruplet or twins. But because of time, it's been delayed. Then this vision begins to like uh, glory and getting demon. But yeah, Shelley, come. Hmm. Even if it's one, just give me. People get to the point of God, even if it's disabled. Mm. At least, let, the, let there be a child that people will call me mommy of this. Daddy of that. So if you are being encouraged this morning, don't get tired. Guide it jealously, wait for it, it will happen. It will surely and definitely happen because God says so. So don't be tired. Don't be tired. And as you're waiting, I said it before, I'm going to say it again. And I think I made a video on it. What do you do during your waiting period? While you're waiting on God for your children, why not get 
enough knowledge about raising children? What is, what is it to, to be intentional in parenting? What does it take to be positive in parenting? What will it take me to, to guide this vision and my growing glory that are coming jealously? A lot of people wasted their time in waiting period, crying away. Sometimes you get down, yes, but be encouraged. That's not what I'm saying today. But if the vision is clear, most of the time it will be very difficult for the devil to weigh you down. I can boldly say in those six years, my husband and I never had a sleepless night. Like we now sat today, oh, what are we going to do about our chair? It never happened. It never, it never. I can't remember a day that we are not praying, we are not crying together. Oh, now, now, now I rest my head on his shoulders. Um, no, no, I don't have babies. No, it never happened. Because we, we, we did not allow the devil to make the vision blurry. We were too sure. And that's why a lot of people call me crazy. Because when you meet me and say, ask me, do you have children? Even my old colleagues, they can testify. I say, yes, yes, how many? I say, two. What's their name? I'll say the names. I say, we are there. I say, no, they are not here. They are still in heaven. I say, you are crazy. Oh, you are really mad. You are mad. You are sick. Check your head. So, but when it eventually happened, a lot of them were able to say, well, tell us about this, your God. Hmm. You've been saying this thing for years. We thought you, were, you have mental disorder or your mental health is not stable. But they were able to see. So I'm saying this to encourage somebody. You are tired. Don't be. You have to roar at the devil. Scream at him. Lord said it. I believe it. And that settles it. Whose report would you believe? I know what you're thinking in your head right now. Oh, yeah, you don't understand. The doctor said it's not possible. <laughs> Do you want to hear what I've heard? Don't go there. Don't. Don't even go there. I go back to that word. Whose report would you believe? Ah, the doctor said the, the tubes are blocked. There is no solution. I've tried IVF. I did, I did everything. It's not working. Don't give up. I always encourage people to go back to God on the platform of this word. So in any journey you want to start in your life, maybe marital, maybe raising your children, have a vision. Because it's a vision that you're going to carry jealously back to God. You said this. You said this. You said this. If there's something that we always carry jealously in our home is what the Lord said to us when we were praying for our wedding. He said, this is my home. So anytime you feel weak, say, Lord, you said this is your home. And it gives peace. So ensure you have a word from the Lord. Search that word. So anytime you feel weak, go back to God on the platform of that word that he has given to you. And you'll be strengthened. Just strength with the back. So don't be tired. Don't be, so instead of being down, instead of being uh, weary, start, start, search, search, search. How do I, how am I going to become a good parent? What how, how can I say for my children? What are the things? Preparation. A lot of people, are, a lot of you right now are waiting on to God for children, but you don't even know how to change diaper. You can't start you can't stand other people's children. You get cranky. If they come to your house, like <clears throat> you have to go. My, I'm not saying the children you come to scatter your way, but you have to be accommodative, be able to learn. Learn. Love, love on other people's children, other people's children. Love on them. Buy gifts. Sow seed. Don't just be in your cocoon like you are just frustrated because you are waiting on God for your own. Don't let the devil cage you. Free yourself. This name has already been broken a long time. You are free. Yes. So love on other children. Take them out. Have a play date with people's children. Let them rob you messy things. It's okay. That's what it takes. When your children come, they will rob you. I said one of the, I don't know, in, I was... I was also in a program with somebody in a parenting session and I said, the children in heaven right now, they don't want to come to you if you're cranky. They can see. They are very smart. They will tell God, God, I am not going to her. Can you see how she, how, how she is? How he is? Why is he shouting? I can't go to that home. Lord, change me. Change me. Change my direction. Sincerely, they are too smart. So be ready. Be open-minded. Let God know. Let the people know that you are not a sadist. You are ready to receive your own growing glory with thanksgiving in your heart. With full intentionality, carrying a clear vision jealously. 
I believe somebody is being blessed this moment. And you know that your time is now, but the things you need to do, you have to do it. The things you need to do, you have to do them. By having those words, by being ready to give it back to God, God over to you. Let it be, not my will, but your will be done. See, parenting is like, having no idea on parenting or not being ready to be intentional is like you don't know how to swim. You didn't go to the pool, you just jump, jump into the lagoon. A lot of people, they fell in love. I've said that over and again. You fell in love with that guy. You fell in love with that lady. It's okay, that's not a problem. But after that, you got married, what next? So many people do not have raising children in the context of marriage. Like they didn't picture it. We are in love. Let me borrow my sister. We are in love. Even when you counsel them, all they are saying is we are in love. So what next? Love is good. It's fantastic. But love is not enough. You must be able to, to, picture, to picture what you are going into. So I'm just going to stop now and go to the next question for my darling. All right. Uh, I don't have much question for you again. But okay, before, before, that, before that, let's answer this question. Let me throw it to you. Somebody said, what if you have... Uh, a partner that doesn't carry the same vision with you, how do you handle that? Um, I, don't, I don't know where to start from, but then, if you have somebody that does not... Pardential, let me phrase it like this, if you are in love with somebody that does not have the same vision like you do, it might be difficult, it might be very, very difficult. Because imagine me in ministry and my husband do not have this kind of vision. He does not even like the fact that I sing. It would be so difficult to maintain the marriage. Because going about, going to sing, having a child, having dominion, having a husband, a husband that knows that I have to go to administration in the morning and he has to eat in the morning. And I had a surprise by 6 a.m. If he did not support that, I have to make food. So there will be so many ministrations that I will not be able to attend. There will be so, so many people that will not be able to have access to my, to my ministry. Because if he is so bent on, you have to make food. You have to do this compulsorily. That he was not ready to bend the rules for me or adapt or accommodate me with because it does not support the vision, it will be so, so difficult. Even now, you might not have heard, you might not have heard of Adi Eka Alashi. Oh, sure. Because if I won't be able to even read my Bible, I won't be able to sing, if all it was bent on is, go and do this. If he was, if he did not want that kind of vision that I have, if he cannot run with my vision, if he, if he cannot push me like this, like we do, <laughs> you don't want to know what he does, actually. He does a lot. He's not behind me, he's not on the stage, he's not this, but he does a whole lot. He does a whole lot. He does a whole lot. So you need somebody that can actually run with your vision. To tell somebody, leave the person you are with now, might be difficult for me to tell you. But you need to know, you need to get to that level yourself that, oh, this is what I want for myself. I can only tell you that it is difficult, that it is best you say, that I want to leave. It is best to say I would like to walk away. I would like to wait on God to give me somebody that can actually run with my vision because the stress, the, the, the breakup now is even better. Breaking up with that person right now will be better for you if you have somebody that actually can run with you. It makes life easy. It makes life more easier because you don't have to explain over and over again that I want to go and minister. Uh, uh, we need to do this. There are so many souls. He understands that already. So he makes it easy. So he will just tell you, okay, go, go, go. Ah, God, thank you. I'll, I'll just say thank you. For right. him, yeah. that, that's awesome. Thank so you. I'm just going to take the aspect of what if they are married. See, she has said it all. Nobody's going to tell you if you're not married, you're dating or you're engaged. And it's very clear. You can see the handwriting on the wall that you are not, your vision is not in line. It's your decision, just as she said. 
But he's mm -hmm. serving the position to tell him. Yes, so, but yes, it, it, it's your decision. However, it is something you might need to consider. Putting God at the center of it all, it depends on who you are and the kind of home you want to raise. Are you a child of God? Is that the will of God for you? Is the person you're with will be able to carry on with the vision that you have from God? So it's up to you, but it's very important for you to have somebody that can carry your vision or you have the same vision to have a successful result. You know somebody that has a vision like you does not necessarily need money. No, yes, I'm not talking about money. It's like, far from so, it. So, some might feel like, oh, he's supporting with money. He's support no, that's no. not it. People get it on. That's true. It's, it's not that's even true. about this one can give me money, this one can buy me car. No, 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 no. It's way, way more than that. Somebody that can give you all. Hmm. That can put all in living your in what you are carrying. All, not mm -hmm. money, not time alone. You all. Like, oh, this thing, at times, mm, mm, my push from him. I know. <laughs> you don't want to know. <laughs> you don't want He's to. doing amazing, I can testify. You don't but. want to know. Yeah. At times, I'll be tired. Mm. I'll be tired. I'll say, oh, ah, you don't understand. You know, he tell you, okay. Okay. That's <laughs> <laughs> true. So we thank God for him. We, we appreciate him even for him to allow her to be with us on the vision guide today. I say, that's my brother, bless you. Okay, I'm just gonna talk to those who are already married, you know? Some people married and maybe, but they are two un unbelievers before they got married, for an example. Uh, along the line, maybe one of them got born again, got a clear vision from God, like you're a believer now, maybe the wife got born again or the husband, either ways, so now, the your spouse is not getting the point at all because your thinking is not aligned. How do you handle the situation? You are married, you can't say you are not going to do it again because it's obviously not the will of God. I believe I've said this in one of my videos before and I said, the best way you can preach the gospel is through your attitude. See, you can only mirror what you want to see. The first thing your spouse will know that this person is different now is the way you behave, the way you talk is different. Maybe before you flare up at, at just little slightly, slightly less provocation, you're going to shout at your husband, what is this not and everything? But your husband is going to begin to realize that ah, she's not shouting. Instead of shouting, honey, I'm sorry. See, your attitude, your wife, your husband, we know that this is a new person. You have to reflect it. It's not by saying, uh, honey, can we sit down? I'm born again now. And no, you don't need to preach it. If you are indeed born again, you don't need to say it out. Your spouse will be able to see it. And with prayers, with your dedication, and mirroring what you want to see, we come to realization, ah, there's something different. I think this their God is sweet. Mm -hmm. I think I better listen to what she's saying. What are you talking about? That is when, it's going to be, say, it's not going to be easy. Don't let me, that's not a joke. It's not a lie. Don't just say what you say is it's not easy. No, I'm not saying it's easy. It's a lot of work, determination, intentionality that my marriage must work, my spouse must get the point. So you will do everything that you're doing with full intentionality. Bearing in mind that you want to show the light of God that you have now. Don't forget, you got married at two unbelievers. Now you know what he or she doesn't know. It will take a lot of patience for you, your words, your speech. Maybe your children have never seen you before saying that ah, I love you or showing affections. Even your children will testify something is wrong with daddy and mommy. Or mommy has, mommy is different. Maybe just a slight provocation you shout, you can shout at your children. Happy, just raising crosses, but they are like no, this this mommy doesn't do that anymore. Daddy doesn't do that. So people will be able to see your family will see that there is something different about you. That is the aspect of when you have started mirroring what you want them to see. And you back it up with strong prayers. God saved you. He can do it for your entire family. Mm -hmm. So with patience, with prayers, you will get to that point. But don't forget, it's not going to be easy. But if you invite God, it will be easy. I believe that is clear. So I'm just going to uh, go to the next question for you. Can you please tell me how you were able... We started a little bit. So the, the ministry and parenting. I know it's a lot of work. I know sometimes you, 
you have to be somewhere in the morning sometimes you all day you're busy you are how has it been easy for you to manage being a parent a mother a lot of people and have, ministry a lot of people have been asking me that question saying so, how do you manage marriage ministry all this administration your children your this okay it can only be god yeah one then two I'm not, I'm not a jackie like you used to say. I'm just grace to have some particular people in my life that made my vision easy to run with. When I go out for ministrations, I try to call my parents because of the minimum. We will pick him from school, from school, we will do school run when we travel, when we are out of Lagos. Because I cannot say because I have a ministry, my son will not go to school. I can't take him everywhere with me. That is one. So, one thing I do is I make sure after the administration, after having a plan for the administration, the next thing I do is to talk to who will take care of, to think about who will take care of the union. At times when I call my husband and he tell me, he tells me that, oh, the first thing, after telling me you have administration to so they say, what are dominion? Who will take care of dominion? Mm. That is the first question. I say, okay, I'll call my mom. At times, if I tell him that I will drop dominion with so, 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 and so, he will tell me he's not comfortable with it. So he will tell me straight that and I don't want him to be with that, in that kind of group, in that kind of circle. He's not comfortable with it. So we'll look for another option. And at times, when I go from administration and come back, the first thing I want to see after a whole long time is to see him. And he will be so happy to see him. I'll be so happy to see him too. So we try to, and God has blessed me with this son, actually. Maybe because while we were growing up, when he was in, in the womb, we went from administration okay, together. together. So he understand that this is what my mom was doing. So as a baby too, we went from administration together. So he knows that after when I come back, he tell me you went to me, you went to sing. My mommy, you went to sing that bit. So he knows that this is what I do. So it makes it easier for for him. So at times when I come back from administration, I find time for him. My leisure, little time that I have, I like to spend it with him most of the time because he needs to feel that I am here. Okay. You can talk to me. Who, 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 what did you do? What did you do? I check his books at times. I, I, I beat him to write at times. At times maybe I don't want to write today. I want to do this. I have to tell him, bro, bro, this is the time, boy. Bro, this is the time that we have. You need to do this one. No. You need to do this one. No. You need to do this one. I have to make sure that he knows that there is a point of law. And there is a point of correction, and there is a point of, oh, you can say whatever you want to say to me, mm -hmm. listening here. So, you, you can talk to me, you can tell me what you want, I will tell you, okay, let's go, let's do this, let's do that. So, you are able to be your child's friend, Steve Bill, uh, you are, you, we should be able to be our child's friend and be an authority. Like, you know that when I say no, it's no, when I say yes, it's yes, mm -hmm. and we can also joke together, and this is very important aspect in parenting i've seen two questions but i think we've answered one somebody said uh, i'm sure people on instagram have questions and uh, they are smiling all of you they are trying to so we, uh, we don't have a lot of time but you can try to drop your question if you have any question for her or any question on parenting generally we will try as much as possible to answer you but i have a question here somebody said okay uh what to do while waiting on uh, trusting god for children i think we dealt with that enough what you can do just love on other people's children and uh, trust god trust god you can check this video again we have talked in, uh, enough on that and at length on that and i have a question somebody said what about people who got married as believers and this and things currently get complicated okay so and what about people who got married as believers and things currently get complicated see for you, if this person, if it's a direct question to you, you are asking for somebody. But if one of the spouse is asking this question, it means you have come to realization there's something wrong. And that's awesome. Because if both of you were believers, and you feel that something is not right, 
It means somebody must come to realization. But if two of you are not aware that you are okay, but somebody must get to that point that something is wrong, something is complicated, even if the other person has not seen it, that somebody must take a step. It's like the way we rededicate our life to God. See, I, I, I made a video years back about rebranding. I don't know if you saw it. That our marriage, we need to rebrand, we need to do everything. See, we need to spiritual rebranding for our home. We need physical rebranding. Sometimes we get too busy for our spouse. Especially if you are married to a pastor or a wife or a minister. We say, we are working for God. My brother, we say, don't be assistant Holy Spirit. We can't be assistant Holy Spirit. These are little, little things that bring about problems in homes. Get to rebrand your home physically, not only spiritual. We, okay, we do family retreats, yes, it's good. When last did you take your spouse to out to a date and something like that? Another thing is effective communication. See, these things pile up. It's not one day thing. If you don't let it pile up, you can never get to a point of no return. Be open-minded, ready to forgive. Ready to forgive. If you see your spouse as you, it is most of the time there won't be problem. See, if you are my husband now, I see you as myself. The only thing that we are not carrying together is the same head. Can I offend myself? Can I fight with myself? As a child of God, this should be our thinking. It helps when you say, oh, think for the person. Ah, she doesn't mean it. It doesn't mean it. It helps. And let that be effective communication, especially for us ladies. We assume a lot. The couch is on the floor. My husband didn't help me pick it up. Meanwhile, the guy is not even thinking in that line. See, his mind is how to provide for the family, how to go to office. For well, you, you are boiling. Your wife is boiling. He's not helping me every time. It's better you speak it out. But if you pick it, if you pile it up, by the time you're going to speak, the, the wall will break. Most of the time, commonly getting to problem in marriage that are believers is lack of communication. We overlook things. Mm -hmm. We over spiritualize everything. Play, play with your wife, play with spice it, keep your children to trusted members, family members sometimes. Those things that you used to do when you don't have children, find time sometimes. I know it's not going to be almost possible every time, but sometime in a while, do it. Somebody said, I like the parts of the branding and this. So, yeah. So you need to be branded. The, the branding is key. You Just like we tell him, he's the only one that has to spend the money. Yes. You have money to yes. Yes. spend it yes. on your husband. Yes. It does not necessarily mean, oh, your husband has to spend the money. Yes. Take your husband to spa, take him out, let him go and eat. On you, all bees on you. You see him smile. Yes. He will actually smile and say, ah, hey, really like And it's like you are sowing say. seed, you know? It's like a, a wife's wife sowing seed. When you sow seed and it germinates. So we are, going to, we, are, we are really trusting God for those homes who are going through turbulence at this time. We pray for peace of God to, to go through mm -hmm. and see them through. However, if we can just learn little, little things and do them, we can avoid a lot of errors in our homes as, as believers. Sure. Don't overlook things. Correct in love, not shouting or raising your voice. Only do you know that I was not happy with what you said? Do you know a lot of believers are, are we are not going to go in there on bedroom matters? And because they can't discuss it, they find it too holy. My dear, you are married. And one is boiling, another one is boiling. Talk about it. Just say it. You are married. You are married. So some people you need to remind them, this is your wife, this is your husband. And they are not happy. Don't keep it in. Rebrand this thing. When you have a product and you feel like that, it's not moving fast in the market. You change the case, you know, you change the label and things like that. It's all about rebranding. People say, oh, they have a new product. Don't forget, it's the same content. But because people have seen another case, another packaging, so also our marriages. We need to give it new look, you know, do something. Do something and with God on your side, if indeed you have made that God the foundation of your home, he will not fail you. So some of, most of the time we don't we don't uh, we don't see these things, we know too well. I'm just gonna read the questions. Somebody said if you don't realize something wrong with you, you can't get help. Can you? Uh, this is not a question. Okay. That's a good point, though. If you don't realize something is wrong with to you, you won't get help and you keep blaming the other person. It is very important for us, even in our parenting, 
I made a video recently and I was saying towards the end of the year, we talked about in parenting essential, I was talking about what were the things that didn't work. So most of the time we want our children to be like robots. I say it, you listen to it, take the direction one time. And in parenting doesn't work like that. We need to take a moment to check ourselves. What are the things in my parenting skills that is not right? That is not going to make me see the desired result in my positive parenting. We don't take that moment. And that was why I did uh, like two videos towards the end of the year, checking the year, the year in review. I did this, but it wasn't good enough. And last week, I was talking about what are the things that you will not do this year that you did last year. A lot of parents are saying, okay, they are going to be part of more, uh, they will engage more in their parents and their children's life this year. Some people say they will stop shouting. We all love to shout. See, marriage is not hard work, but parenting is hard work. Marriage is too grown up. You can always talk about it with much, much more understanding. Mm. But parenting, they are children. And some most of the time we have unrealistic expectation on our children. We want to remote control them. It doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that. And we don't have time. I can't say much about that. Like you don't want your child to say no to you. My dear, if you want to raise a child that cannot say no to you, it's a big problem. If you are raising a future leader, your child should be able to say no to you. But in not. Don't get me wrong in the cost. I believe I have that video on our YouTube channel. So we, can, we are not going in depth in that today. However, it is very good for us to check ourselves. In marriage, check yourself. What do I do? Do, yes. Somebody said, what do I do to win my husband's love? Oh, okay. Let me just read this. I love the music. But my question it doesn't... Okay. Okay, somebody said, Ma, how did you get your team together from start? Okay, um, what we did was, um, when I was in church, there's some set of guys that we used to use there. So my husband knows some people too, we invited them over, we had a conversation, we had a meeting, we told them our vision, can you run with it? From the start, it might not look like it, there was no money, you had to, you had to, then I think I used to give them 200 now. Yeah. Hmm. yeah, then we started. The likes of Omele, um, talking about them, talking about a lot of people. 200 naira. 200 naira, times 100 naira. We'll go for administration, just take so that you shall put it in your pocket. <laughs> so that's, <coughs> that's just it. Just take 200 naira, keep it in your pocket. Just, just keep it. So then, so now, <laughs> Most of them they still say that. Ah, I do well or no. I do well or no. <laughs> you know, all of those things. So that's how we started. We gathered them, we had meetings, we had we had then we used to have rehearsals, we talk, we now tell them my song, we will create, we will do this and that's that's it. Very good. Okay, I'll just we have some questions and we don't have a lot of time. We try to ah, oh, okay, it's already one hour, we're supposed to use one hour, but we're just gonna take a few more minutes. To clear this question, but however, I have one or two questions for me to you. Okay. So there is this popular thing I hear people say. You say earlier about Ade Inka last year, we like ah, uh, the Lord I just brought Ade Inka to limelight. Uh, do my own. It's good. It's good. But I want you to please tell us. Do you just come from one place and we just heard about you one time Ade Inka last year? Where have you been around? Can you please clear you the hair on that? You know, it is just. Um, normal for people to say the time they know me okay. at that time that that fame or the limelight came okay. that's when people can say ah oh no she she be oh my oh she she daddy okay. that is when they discover that okay. but I've always been there I've always been around I've I've always been singing in so many churches so many churches can testify to this so way back before fame I've been going so many people can say this that oh hmm. <laughs> you know, the, a lot of people can actually attest to the fact that I've been around, I've been waiting, I've been praying, I've been punctual, I've been consistent, I've been, I've been, I've been, I've been working on that. For how long? 2009, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 15, that was before, that, that was, I had 7 years before, another 12 years. Mm. There was 
2009, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. I've always been dead. I've always been going for ministration. I've always been, I think from 2009 or thereabouts or hits, I've been, I've been around, I've been working, I've been doing a whole lot of things. I've been doing a whole lot of things. So I've been there. It was just that when the time, the set time came, when the set time came was when people saw me, when they started listening to Arodile, when they started listening to Made the Way. The first time I traveled, 2015, December 2015, that was the first time I stepped my feet out of Nigeria to Dubai then. So nobody knew me there. So if I, I've been there, I've been working, I've been doing a whole lot of things. And I've not just been sitting, I've not been idle. I've been constant, I've been praying, I've been rehearsing, I've been praying for studios, I've, I've done um, some songs. But can you just give us, I know there's not a lot, you see, by the grace of God, I believe we are still going to be privileged to have you back in the Parenting Essential Division Guide. So, however, can you give us one or two sacrifices that you did during the time of your, like, you know that you're just sacrificed, laboring, and uh, waiting for that time to come. I, I, know, but I know myself some sacrifices that you did, but I want you to say by yourself for people to know that even when you're waiting, it, 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 it will take a lot of sacrifices. But at the point you were working, yeah, I was yeah, yeah, I was working as an accountant, mm -hmm. and yeah, I used to have to. Sometimes I have to pay most of the time, not even sometimes, most of the time, because then there was no name, there was no fame. Mm -hmm. So we just want to do this worship, do and all that. So at that time, I used to use my my the salary, salary to pay my team members so that they have to keep us together. We have to go for ministrations in the same bus. So we have to either rent a bus and it has to come, it falls on me. I have to do that with my money. So those are one of those sacrifices that I know that, okay, that was materialistic. And at the time, there will be a time I will be the one fasting for my team. Mm. They are not fasting. They are not fasting. They don't know about the fasting. But I have to fast for them. I have to, because we are together. If you are in, if you are in a bus together, all over the king of war, or company, you to check him on the only. So, you need to fast for them, you need to pray for them. There are times I call them to come and pray too. There are times I invite them to come and fast. Those are the sacrifices we do. At times I get money to get them uniform. I get uniform for them because I want it to look like, oh, we are branded. And you have to get it with your money. So, I have to get it with my money, I have to just give them one. So, at times I sew for them. At times I sold for them because then they were not collecting too much and they were not working. So I used my salary for all of those things. So when people see us together as in uniform, they feel like, ah, see me, you look like coin. So it excites them to see that you are in uniform and you are, you know, all of those things. I've been, I've been around. Yeah, you have to go out of your ways many times. See, this is a kind of advice for those who are trusting God for something like this. Maybe you are also a music minister. And you thought, Lord, one day, let my own time come. Your time will come. Definitely your time will come. Yeah, but definitely you have yes. to work. But you have to work. Mm -hmm. See, this is an advice, and I just want you to drop an advice for those who are trusting God. Also, music ministers, especially for the music minister. I don't want to call them upcoming because your time is already here. You just have to believe it. However, we shouldn't look away from the things we are supposed to do. If you're not doing what you're supposed to do, you know, we have to do our part. What advice that is going to help those who also trusting those who are trusting God for uh, a name? in their career in music ministry be consistent with whatever you are doing mm. be intentional about things you do for god not because i want to do it but because it is something i have to do in love not that because they are pushing me no you have to do you have to get to a point in your life where you, what you are doing you see it as oh i am doing it for a better it is beyond uh, I want to sing on platforms. Mm. I want people to see me in churches. I want them to know it is beyond that. It is in in intentional relationship with God that brings about the right time. Mm. When you have intentional, consistent relationship with God, when God sees that this one, if I bless him or I, see, I take this one to the limelight, it will not because of this leave me. It, it is a level. It is not by reading the Bible alone. It is not even by going to church alone. Mm. It is by having a fellowship. 
a personal relationship with God. Mm -hmm. At times, I, I, I say it over and over that at times I stay in my house and worship God for two hours, three hours. No, not because it's everybody is there. Yeah. I just want to hold on. I just want to sing. I just want to worship. I just want to smile. I just want to shout at God and tell God, God, you are good. Mm -hmm. Those are the things I do in my waiting time. So God was intentional about it that on Mufe bless or more. It was God. It was. It was not God. He, he wants it that Mufe bless or more. bomb my daddy. It was God, not because of anything. It was because I had that with God. See, all about that being was okay. It is about oh, it's not about memory. Come, 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 Wait, this is my personal relationship with this person. With or without faith, this is what this person has been doing. With or without money, this is what this person has been doing. So it is about consistency, your patience, and what you do to God. When nobody, what you like to do to God. When God sees your heart, it's so easy for Him to lift you. It when nobody is watching. You. When nobody, when your parents are not there. At times, my mommy will come back from work. When I get back from school, then and. She would be knocking on the door because I was worshipping. I was running on the floor. I would lock the door and be singing and be shouting. At times I would be telling God, Holy Spirit, one me, a me, one me. Along, along. You know, those things are just things that I do personally when my parents are not around. They are not there to watch me. And when she comes, she says, Kill on the tomato, see your papa now. Kill the tomato. You want to go I wish we have more time than we, this video. I wish, I wish she's actually watching this. I don't think Grandma is there. I wish one of them is actually watching this actually. We'll see you later. 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 See, you later. see, I wish we had more time. However, I believe on the vision guide, uh, we are going to see the more privilege. We are going to have another privilege to bring her back. There is a lot to talk about. Our time is up. However, I have a question from somebody. Oh, there's a call that's coming in. All right, and then I will give, I'll ask her the last question, and uh, we call it a day. So, somebody said here. Yeah, somebody said, "How do you control a child who has much energy and too playful?" This is a big question that we are not going to have time. To really buttress now however I think I have videos on this that can help you if you can send us message on our on our Facebook or Instagram I'll be able to help you out and answer okay or you can send out the message I will still get the message anyways about your child because for us to be able to answer this question I need to ask you a few questions if the child is just energetic energetic and there is something nothing wrong with the child so we have to be we have to be sure that there's nothing wrong, and that child might need an evaluation. I might need to talk to you as parent for me to be able to give you the right answers. However, I've made a video on some activities you can get your active child engaged, and it's right there on our uh, YouTube channel, the Vision Guide. And you can also send us message on the Vision Guide or send the message directly to Adeyinka Lashi Yori. Both ways, we are going to get the questions. I think they are okay. Okay, so I'll pay this back now about somebody who asked a question on an uh, active child. Send us a direct message. We don't have enough time to answer that today. And we have some videos who can be, that can be of help on your active child. And if you have a specific question, just send us a message and we're going to get back to you. My last question for my guest today is, where do you see yourself in the next 10 years? Mm. 10 years is too far. I'm picturing it right now. Mm. Before the years time, yeah. I don't know. For me, I feel God's plan for me is actually is paramount. Mm. I just look. You know, when you are a tree, when you are a tree, and you have um, a, a busy weed, when you have a busy weed in the forest, you give me tell you bye bye. So I am just in God's hand. Whatever happens in 10 years, according to God's plan, is fine. So I don't want to give God what I want you to do. In 10 years' time, I want His will. I want to be in His will. In His will. I want His good. will to be perfect and I want to be in His will. Awesome. Awesome. Completely. So I don't, I see myself, yeah, that, like, oh, this is it, this is it, this is it. I picture some things that are, are like this level, international, international, international. 
many stuff like you know not like not this level you know like international 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 where white you sit there and say oh moro aruji <laughs> you know yeah give us give us give us yeah me oh ibi ahanu ba e mi de o aruji le ni moro when the white when the every unbeliever all over the world Amen. will give their life to Christ even at the sound of my voice and that time may not only be already may be hello him hello him <laughs> so it might be any song so in God's will in God's direction Amen. so most important thing most important thing is to be in God's will mm -hmm. being in God's will you've said a lot today and uh, for me personally I am blessed okay I am so blessed I've learned a lot I like to learn I like to learn I like to learn and I just want to say thank you for joining us on the vision guide with this special edition of Parenting Essential today. My darling, a day in car, a lash, And if you are seeing my face for the first time, my name is Oye, Oye Lion, and I am your parenting coach. And you can see many of our videos on our YouTube channel. You really need to check that channel out. You need to subscribe. It's not because we want people. But because you will learn, you will learn. When I got here, I told her that, ah, in Bailey, the Lord gave you that call, that ministry. You can be a marriage counselor and you can be, in fact, what the Lord has deposited in you concerning children. Most, my, that's not my call. That's not my, that's not my, my, my own ministry. But it is us. Check it out. Parenting, parenting, vision, vision guide, TV. Parenting essentials, all those things you need to do as a parent is that you would you would be wild like oh maybe this boy the way I'm treating or the way I'm training him or the way I'm I'm speaking to him or so many things that I am learning too from that page. So you need to go there. Hmm. You don't want to miss the next edition. God bless you. Thank you so much, Adeinka, Lashe, Yori, Omotori, and Nuba. So you can go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's called The Vision Guide. And do well by shifting the notification bell so that you can get notified anytime we drop new video. However, I want to say thank you for joining this special edition of Parenting Essential with my one and only sister, Adeinka, and Lashe, Yori. Thank you so much. Don't forget that. Parenting must be intentional. In the best said, an interesting section. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, parenting must be intentional. It must be purposeful, and it must be jealously carried and guided. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for coming. You are blessed, and thank you, my darling, for coming. Don't come back and tell me that I'm not pretty good. Thank you, everybody. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you for joining. Bye, guys. Kisses. Come here, sweetheart. <laughs>